Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad back again with the final video. Uh, well, one of the final videos. I got one more to do after this to go in and show you guys about the coloring process or the dyeing technique that we've been putting on and finishing up the other videos uh, that we talked about in the other videos. But I just wanted to go back and do this last one. We had a, I had a little break. Uh, we're getting the after effects of Hurricane Flow that's out there uh, in the Atlantic. Uh, just, just a lot of rain and it's been really humid. So if you guys see that I'm glistening a little bit, I forgot to turn the air on in the shop back here and it is a little bit warm. So I'm trying to let it cool off a little bit now. But while I was letting some other projects that I was working on uh, uh, set, um, I decided to go ahead and do this quick video to show the last, the last template that was working on what I, that we were talking about to show you guys again that you don't have to over tool or, or or carve every piece. You don't have to do that. Sometimes you can just keep it simple and do some different things with the dye or the water stain or paint, just whatever that you that uh, that you use to apply your color to whatever piece. So. But uh, again, it was not about so much as tooling. You don't have to tool every piece. Um, you, you don't have to carve every piece. Sometimes you can just do some simple stuff and that will make the work still look good if you change up the dye process. All right, not to keep repeating myself, but let me get off and show you guys or tell you guys about the tools that we're going to be using today in uh, this one. So let me clean off my, my spectacultures here. Uh, getting old y'all guys know I had to put the magnifier on there and the two tools or three tools that I'm going to work with it's still actually two um, one of these is this because both of these are my favorites uh, and they're two backgrounding tools these two right here this one here on my right uh, is a tool that I bought from Hide Crafters out of Texas I love this tool Love this tool. And this is a backgrounding tool that I bought. Uh, it's a craft tool that I bought from Tandy. So, uh, but the, the way these two tools work, um, I like the texture that it gives the leather um, when I'm tooling it on as a, as a background. And they are backgrounding tools. Now, another thing that I like about them, you guys see how big those are? Those are pretty big. Uh, Maybe if I had a dime, let me show you how in comparison to a dime that is. And it covers a lot of area. And what I love about these big tools are that you can background all over the piece with them and it takes away from your tool stamping marks. Uh, if you guys have been stamping or tooling, you know that sometimes you can stamp too hard and it'll leave the impression of the stamp that you leave, uh, that uh, it leaves the impression of the stamp that's really unattractive to a piece. But the great part about background is, uh, tools are you can go right back over that again and it'll get rid of those marks. That's what I love about these. Um, and I haven't made up my mind which one I want to use in it. Uh, use on this particular template and then but the other two is my regular smooth beveler and this is my smooth beveler and again you guys can see uh, I love big big tools because you can cover so much space with them so you pretty much can get an estimate and a size on what that is but uh, this uh, we're going to use the beveler around the border edge uh, to give it a little more rounded piece just to highlight and raise up the texture uh, tooling that we're going to do on this with the background and tools. So I think I'm going to go half and half because I love these tools so much. I use them quite regularly, but just so you guys can see uh, what I see. So I'm going to do half of this template uh, with one tool and half of the template with the other two. But let me give you guys the tools that I'm using. So we can do this. Oh, that's too much magnifying right there. Okay. Now the beveler that I'm going to use is the it's a Tandy tool. It's F F eight nine zero. No six. Yep, that's a six. F eight nine six. 
F896 is the smooth angle beveler and you can see how it's angled a little bit. That's what we want. We want this to hit that border, um, the border and it's going to round it off. So, and then the, the one, the background and tool that I bought from Hide Crafters. Now, the great thing about this one is you can put this flat part right up against your, your edge, your, your borderline. And you can just tool that all the way down that borderline and it'll keep you from having it keep you from going over into your border. Now, this one here, it requires a little bit more finesse because it doesn't have a flat end. But it's still a great way, a great tool to use. So pretty much what I do, I try to find the flattest edge and that's this part right here. And I'll just angle my tool just a little bit just to stay off my borderline and just to make sure that it gets right down in there. Now this tool is, it's a craft tool by Tandy and it's E2940-08. That's E, E as in Edward, 294-08. And again, I'm gonna do half of this uh, with with the craft tool and half with the um, high crafters tool. But right now, my piece is already, so let me angle this camera down so you guys can see how this is going to work. I'm going to make sure that you guys get this real good. So, God, I actually got my tripod working so I can get an overview over it. So, let's get the cracking. And then I'm going to tell you guys some new things that's happening out here in the leather world to where we have a lot of new artists, people that does tattoos, people that draw, they're making that crossover off into doing leather crafting, and they're putting out a lot of new ideas that's out there. So, all right, what I'm going to do is start by this, and I'm going to put my edge beveler right there on the edge of this tool, edge of my border edge. And I'm just going to do some rapid fire hits all the way down the inside of that line there. And again, take your time. You can tilt this tool a little bit. And then I'm just going to smooth it right on out. Now, with this tool, if you guys find yourself having a little bit of the tool markings on there, uh, I know I announced it and I spoke of it in another video, but I'll reiterate it in this video. Anytime that you guys see that you have some tool markings in your leather work, take your modeling spoon and you just want to go right over that mark and smooth those marks out. You can actually, if you don't have a beveler, you can actually take your modeling spoon and do the whole entire piece like that if that's what you want to do. We just want to raise the, uh, we're gonna, we just want to raise our edge border or our border line. We just want to raise that up and cause a little separation from the interior part of this particular template. So you can either use your modeling spoon or you can use your bevel. Either one is fine. Uh, if you don't have it in your arsenal, if you don't have a bevel, if you don't have a bevel in your arsenal, then uh, use your border, uh, use your modeling spoon. I just like the way, also I like the way that these smooth bevelers uh, and a lot of my uh, smooth uh, t tools that I use. I just like the burnishing look that it gives, especially with the way that I'm going to show you guys how we're going to dye this. All right. So, and you just want to keep this tool moving. That's why we do a bunch of little rapid fire quick hits so you can keep it moving and it gives you a nice uniform look. And you don't want this tool to stop. You want it to keep working. And then we're going to turn that around and do the same thing to the other side. And it requires a little bit of practice when you first started using these tools because you want to and you get you some scrap pieces and practice on. Get you some scrap pieces and practice on. Get your technique down. Find out how hard you need to hit it. I mean, you're not driving nails. And if your leather is properly cased, 
then it's going to give you a nice burnished look to where you just have to practice. You just have to practice to get the desired like feel that you that you like. Now, I, uh, another thing is I have two different mallets. Uh, I have a 14 ounce mallet, and then this is a mallet that I made out of some old polyurethane. Uh, uh, I get I don't know if you'll call that a rod or a dial, but this whole entire piece here was about uh, four foot long, and I just cut it down uh, to the size of the mallet that I, uh, mallet that I needed, and drilled me a hole. And went to Lowe's, bought my bought me a hammer, uh, hammer, and just drove it down in there, and that's all that I need. It's just a little bit lighter than my 14, just a little bit lighter. And so we're just gonna do that light tooling work, rapid fire, not not hard, not heavy, and we just want to. Oh, I didn't even go all the way down with that. Okay, you guys, hang tight. I'll be right back with the next phase and we're back right here again now we're going to use our background and tools now this is this is something that you can use when you just this is my go-to when I think that I have or if I really just don't want to overthink a person or if I have a customer or a client they just say just uh make me something simple and plain. I can't do simple and plain. And I know I can't because that is my company's brand that's going out there. And simple and plain is just not me. Because I want people to see my work and talk about my work and promote my work. So, uh, so this is my go-to when I have those customers. Now I'm gonna go to my 14. Uh, when I have those customers that just say, you know, they don't want any tooling work. Now, I'm showing you guys how I'm using. This is with a tool from High Crafters, the uh, PA005. This is the High Crafters uh, background and tool, PA005. And that's this one here, if you guys can see that. So, I just I love the way that this tool works. And this background tool is the same way like the beveler. We're just going to use quick little rapid fire. And we're just going to go over, just going to go over the whole entire piece. Doesn't, doesn't take long because this tool is so big, the face of it is so big, it covers a lot of area. area. And it, it covers up a lot of that tooling mark too because we're using a heavier mallet. So a lot of those stamping tool marks are now gone. And it looks just like a bunch of little circles and bubbles. I wonder if you guys can see that. Just a nice background tool. I, I love that tool there. Now we're gonna go, now I'm gonna go to the uh the the tandies. Um, and this is the Craft 2 E294-08. That's 08. I think that's an 8. Let me make sure. 03. E294-03. Told you guys I'm getting old. My eyes going bad. Same thing. Bunch of rapid fires, covering a lot of space, and you really can't go wrong with this tool because it's not matting. It's not matting all of the leather. It's leaving some leather raised, so it just gives it a nice. To me, it kind of reminds me of uh, when I put the Rhino liner in my truck. It just gives it good texture. You know, and that's all that it is, is just good texture on a piece. And it's going to put this all the way down. And then we'll be done with that. Adjust this light right quick. And we're just going back and touching it up. 
uh, parts that we might have missed. And that's the great part about it is that you can always go back over it again with the same tools. I love those tools. So I'm going to show you guys these and just show you what it looked like. Uh, let's get it back in the light. There we go. So this is the high crafters tool here. This is the Tandy's tool here. I just really like the way that that texture looks. Now, the only thing that I would even say is just to accent this because you can leave it that way. But let's take an other or unorthodox tool and just give it a little bit of character. So now I'm going to take my smooth pear shader. And that's this tool here. Can you guys see that? I hope you can because I'm trying to break my neck to see if you can see it. And it's just a regular smooth pear shader. These come in three sizes and this is the middle size. It has a little smaller brother and then it has a bigger brother. But this is a, a pear shader here. Normally you would do, use this tool when you're doing flower petals uh, or when you're trying to make a burnish run in the, in the flower petals. Th that's what a lot of crafters use this tool for. Uh, great tool to put in your arsenal, but you just don't have to use it for flowers. You guys know my motto, know your tools and what they can do. And this is another Tandy tool, and it's called, uh, It's the numbers are P as in Paul 206. Paul 206, P206, the medium size pear shader. Now what I'm going to do with this is just, I'm just, I'm just going to put some accent marks on here. So let's see if we can get this where you guys can see it. And we're just going to pow, just put these sporadically. No particular way. Uh, just giving this a little depth and character just to bring out, just to break up the, uh, yes, there you go. Just to break up the background and part. Nothing fancy about it. Just a different type of look now what I'm going to do at this point is uh, and you guys already know so I won't have to go over this again because I want to get back to this template and doing the two-tone shading on that but same process uh, super sheen or you can use uh, resiline on this center part here or you can go completely different and just take your fine paintbrush and resiline or super shine the border just that interior line, not the outside, just the interior line. Do that three times over a 72 hour period, one coat per day, allowing the 24 hour time for it to fully dry. And then come back with a nice, a nice medium brown antique or a nice mahogany antique. And then when you wipe that off, it'll leave that, that edge borderline that the natural leather color and it will uh, antique the outside and the inside. So the accent to this is not only just a simple backgrounding and pear shading work, but leaving that line on the border edge, leaving that natural. That's what's going to make this particular template pop. And if you go into my, my uh, social media pages, you guys will see the finished templates uh, up there. Uh, so if you're not friends with me on social media outlets, Facebook, you guys can look me up on uh, Facebook on the Premier Leather Crafters. I'm on Instagram on the Cowboy PLC and that's K-A-W-B-O-I. Uh, let me move this camera so we can get back while I'm talking. Um, I'm on Instagram as Cowboy K-A-W-B-O-I PLC. Uh, so send me an invite and a lot of times that I, I know I don't get back to showing you guys the finished products on uh, YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow me to uh, post pictures in the comment section for you guys to see that. So I would have to make another video to show you guys what the finished product look like. But if you go into my other social media outlets, then you can definitely see the uh, finished pieces on there. So now let's get to this template here. The one that we, uh, the one that I put the resiline uh, on the uh, ribbon on both sides, the interior part and the outside edge of this template is still natural, it's untouched. This has been three days resiline. So I know this piece is ready to go. And what I'm going to use here is a nice, uh, I don't want to use the British tan, 
I want you guys to see something different. Uh, I'm gonna put this on with a saddle tan, a saddle tan gel. Now, I do use a lot of the antique paste. These are very good to use. Uh, it really gets down into the embossing uh, parts of the tooling work. So if you are a tool stamper, uh, paste will be your best friend. Just a little bit of tip and a nugget right there. The, the antique paste will be your best friend. And these come just as many colors as the liquid gel. But to really get down into your tool impressions, that antique paste is the ticket to go. Now, uh, into a lot of your carving work, your gel is the place to go. And then I'll show you guys on another video about uh, one of the crafters, the, actually the lady that taught me how to do, how to draw Sheridan, turned me on to this one. And then I'll show you guys how we use this uh, leather dye, the, uh, the Phoebings. Uh, now, you can use the Eco brand if you choose, but this is leather dye into a hemp needle bottle. This works great for Sheridan. That's another video down the road. So let's get to cracking with this one here. Uh, let me find some uh, poster board to gel this on. I'm just going to put a nice little coat on this. Uh, actually, let me show you guys. Let me angle this camera again so you guys can see what's happening. Uh, and I'm just going to rub this into... Invest in you some vinyl gloves to Harbor Freight. Two dollars. Can't beat it. Can't beat it from Harbor Freight. Two dollars. Uh, unless you have a wife that's a nurse and she can get you rubber gloves all day long, which is no problem too. You just want the. It takes forever for that um, for this gel and dye to get out of your hands. And. You guys need to invest in paper towels too, as well. Paper towels are the best thing to wipe these off. I know I'm using the wool because uh, that's all that I had laying around right now. And here we go. See how the ribbon is the accent part of this piece? And you could have did this with any, um, any uh, antique gel. Uh, you could have went dark brown or if you wanted to go with a black, it still would have left that ribbon, that natural color of that. Now what I'm going to do is let this dry a full 24 hours, then come back and I'm going to seal the entire piece. So if he was working with, um, if he was working with, the, if he was working doing this on a belt or anything like that on a leather cuff, then I would tell you um, to just resiline the whole entire piece and you would do that another three days. So all in, if this was a belt, this belt would take one week to make. Three days on the prep, one day on the tooling or, or the, the, the stamping part, and then another three days on the sealing of the completed piece. And if you're gonna braid it, then you have to, uh, not braid it, but if you're gonna uh, saddle stitch it, you have to add that time in there too. So one week on one piece of belt, and you guys can be commanding high dollars for that. Nothing short on this belt. Uh, I wouldn't let it go for anything less than 85 if it was me. But you guys can do what you want depending on your market and what the town or the area that you live in. All right, that is the conclusion for this part of it. Uh, again, you guys can look, I'm glistening again, y'all. Um, you guys can also always, like I said, you can go onto my Facebook uh, and send me a uh, friend request on there. On there, uh, it's on the Premier Leather Crafters uh, on Facebook or Cowboy P L C K A W B O I P L C on Instagram. I'm on Twitter under my government name Robert Muhammad. Uh, so whatever. Uh, send that out so you guys can see the final pictures. Hey, look, you guys have a good one. Thank you for chilling with me these 24 minutes, man. I appreciate you guys. Keep subscribing. Keep the comments coming. I don't know everything, but I do know a lot of people. And if I don't know it, I can know. I know the person who can reach out to you and get you an answer in a short period of time. Hey, as always, keep practicing. 
Learn what the tools can do. Don't make it complicated. Keep it simple. Work on something else, and then we can go from there. Hey, see you guys on the other side, man. Peace.